Actually, no, no, Bernie's cut. Steve Nadeski's in because you you what? came like in the top yeah, five. Green. Wally, put the uh, put the trophy down. That's as close as Wally's ever going to get to it. <laughs> All right, Steve, there, Wally down. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Where's the cat? What am I looking at? That camera there. This is a um, this is our presentation ceremony via Zoom. I suppose it's typical of what happens during uh, during COVID, during floods, during bushfires. I do notice now that everyone has stopped becoming a bushfire expert and a COVID expert and our flood That's experts. Fantastic. We've got plenty of them in Brisbane. You're going to have plenty of them in Sydney here as well. Um, we all, you all know who I am, but online here we have uh, we've invited everyone who fished the tournament, but we've also invited all of the observers that we had and dead set. There's no way that I would sit in a boat for 14 hours watching fishing, getting my ass rained on. So observers that are here yeah. tonight, thank you very much for, for what you've done. We've got some great highlights that I'm working on at the moment. We had good highlights last night. They're even better this time. You guys did a great job of getting your phones out, filming the action. We even had some commentary in some of them there and I didn't even have to do anything. I just cut and pasted them in. So observers, thank you very much. Let us know if you didn't get your little pack full of dye or bait junky soft plastics and braid scissors and your bait wallet, et cetera, because we have got uh, little gifts for all the observers. So guys, thank you very much. Also competitors, thank you very much because I don't think I've seen a more trying open weather-wise. Um, a lot of rain, a lot of wind. It's the first day we've actually ever had to cancel a day of the open. Um, which is unfortunate, but um, the Open has always been about having your gear last, having your body last, having your mental side last, and the person that comes out at the top of that wins this trophy, and you don't just get given this trophy, you have to earn it. So uh, we're going to talk to uh, the winner of that trophy and talk to the uh, talk about the top 10 uh, tonight. Um, of course, you all know that we've cancelled day three. We were just waiting on that 4 p.m., uh, Ocean, the, that was actually the inshore weather forecast is the gale warning current for Sydney inshore waters. And uh, that's just a safety risk that we don't take and our insurer doesn't like it when we run, uh, when we run events with a gale warning. So uh, we made that call as difficult as it was at, um, at four o'clock this afternoon. So uh, you'll get a day off tomorrow or get a day to travel or to batten down the houses for the floods that might be coming. Um, let's go through the results. Um, Firstly, before we do that, I want to um, congratulate everyone for the, um, the speed with which she became very proficient at using the app. We talked before, Nicole and I, about how we probably couldn't have designed a more difficult situation to use the app in. Touch phones are difficult when you've got a, um, wet fingers, cold fingers. Um, everyone managed to get all of their fish in and there were very, very few situations that we couldn't resolve. We had a few issues with some Samsung phones down at Malakuta. There was an update done to the app and it seemed like everyone got their results in. And when we came in, it was a quick reconciliation. But the main thing about those results is that people, and we haven't got the numbers yet, but we'll see the numbers during the week, that live scoreboard gets accessed thousands and thousands of times during this event. You guys that fish this event, people are very interested in what happens on the harbour. You know, we, we all love to be the armchair experts. Sydney's got about 4 million armchair expert anglers that, that knew it was going to fire at the car park today, um, as all you guys found out when we were out there. So um, so thanks for putting the live scores in. No one held out on the scores. Everyone put them in. Thousands and thousands of people watched. And it was a really interesting... I, I, I like having a look at the scoreboard and I like checking that it works for a start. And then I just look at it and just go... Holy shit, people are on it early. Other people get on it late. That leaderboard changes. I think, Liam, you were leading first thing this morning. Everyone sort of has a turn at leading. And then when the day ends, the winner comes there. You don't see any of those kinetics during a weigh-in. Um, you don't get to see how the event unfolds. You know, whether you catch your kicker fish on the first or last cast, you take that audience along with you. Um, so very, thanks very much for doing that. I think it was, uh, we, we're not running all tournaments on apps. We're running tournaments that need the good publicity and tournaments that have legislative limits to them, like a, like a bass tournament in a river where we can run a five fish limit instead of a two fish limit. Let's run through some of the results. Uh, our top 10. Uh, I've got some big brim results here. We don't have a big brim prize, but David Masters, he caught a metre three Dewey that he slipped into the app there. So I've got a metre three sitting in there. Good catch on six pound line. I assume that was on the flats. Out on the, I think someone, I think you got it out on the pit water flats there, dollar three Dewey. Um, but uh, 
Adam Bataldo's 430, 1.801 kilo brim was the biggest we had for this event. Um, let's go from 10th through 1st. We're going to mail these out to people that aren't here, but we have badges for the top 10. Everyone loves a badge. We have novelty checks for the top five, and we will mail them out with the actual physical checks. And, of course, we have we have a take-home trophy that's not here because it's somewhere between casino and here. The perpetual trophy, this big novelty check that you're going to have to put... Um, you're going to have to put wall plugs in to mount it that's that heavy uh, for the winner of the event. Let's start at 10th place, and we're going to recognise the people that have came into the top 10. Um, and I think it was his first open, Mark Thompson, caught 10 out of 10 fish for 6.457. So well done, Mark. Uh, you conquered the open. You got full limits. You got a badge coming your way. And also the fifth dial reel. I think it's about a $400 dial we have all the way up to about, an, I think it's the Luvius Arity is the sixth place one. So what's that? $800. Nicole's got her fingers going up there. So, uh, Mark, you've got a great dial reel coming your way. Also, the value goes up for the dial was after that. Uh, Amud Mafood, uh, 10 fish, 6.854 kilos. Um, is Amud here? Oh, okay. Why don't you unmute him? And, Amud, why don't you tell us uh, uh, how you got that uh, 4.675 kilo bag today, mate? How was your, uh, what did you get him on? Yeah, I got them off the flat, obviously. Um, uh, threw some plastics around. They were biting off the floor, so you sort of had to bait fish it and um, slowly work it. And uh, Vibes was doing the trick as well, same um, as Jamie's crab, dumped in uh, the sauce and, and pretty much <laughs> left there to, to be taken. There you go, mate. Well done. And well done on going from about Thanks, the, the low teens up into the top 10. Well done. We've got a reel coming your way. Um, in eighth place, we have our current, I think he's online as well. We've got our, uh, our, our well, he was our current Australian Open champion. Michael Colaturis caught three kilos on day one, but a 4.2 kilo bag today. Mick, you thought 4.2 kilos might have been solid today, but it only got you up into eighth place. Is he muted? We'll unmute you. Hold on a sec, mate. Hold on. Is that good? I can read the... Yeah, we can hear you now, mate. Uh, eighth place oh, okay, was all cool. 4.2 kilos got you today. It, it was harsh out there. Yeah, look, um, due to the conditions, obviously, um, it was very limited with what we could do, but I'm pretty happy to bring back 4.2 on a pretty, pretty tough day. So I think if you're consistent every day and you get your five fish and you're up, over the three and a half, you're always in contention. So, yeah, can't complain. Had, had a great time. Well, you've got another uh, badge coming your way and a great dial or reel. So we will put that in the mail to you when we get home. Thanks, Mick. You're a great champion for the year. Everything was 100%, mate. It was awesome. Um, in uh, seventh place, uh, we I think he was the most excited guy today. Cohen Moranti caught 2.3 kilos yesterday. And Cohen's online, I think we have here. He caught himself. 4.978 kilos today. Give him a 10 fish bag for 7.281 kilos. Cohen, you would have been snapping your doodle right off with that bag, wouldn't you? Oh, mate, it was gone at about 8 o'clock this morning when I, <laughs> when I got that first 37. <laughs> I think I was sitting on two fish for a fair while there, but um, at about lunchtime, it all just started happening. So, no, it was, uh, mate, the, the doodle's well and truly gone, mate. I'm stoked. Good stuff, mate. <laughs> And I love to see you running with that uh, metaphor. But you said at the uh, when we did the interview, Wayne, you did your damage with some atomic metals. Run us through that pattern that you had going on the flats there. Yeah, so I actually had uh, my first two fish just on plastics and then it was getting a little bit slow. So I just tied on the old faithful uh, atomic metals um, in the Hey You colour. Um, I'd have it here now to show you, but it got dusted off on like the last 20 minutes. But um, yeah, I was just throwing it out winding in really slow and the fish were all over it so had a great day Could, couldn't be more happy with how everything went today so and that's your first uh top 10 in the australian open mate first of many first top 10 um yeah hopefully there's a few more to come but um it was it's actually been my third open um the first one was when we actually had the um the event where if you get knocked or you verse someone on the first day um i actually drew ross canazaro so that was my open, done and dusted, <laughs> my first one. <laughs> so, yeah. Suicide. Second last year, third this year, a little bit better than the previous two. So, yeah, happy as, can't wait for the next one. 
Good on you, Cowan. Well done, mate. Uh, in, uh, and you've got a great dial reel coming your way as well. Don't know exactly off the top of my head what it is, uh, but it's the second best one that we have in the prize pool there for seventh place. Um, first one uh, out of the money. Uh, wins himself a great dial reel, and I'll let him let us know uh, what he might do with it. Tommy Slater, you caught uh, 3.003 on day one, but up to, to a near four and a half kilo bag today. And, uh, mate, another top 10 in the Open. Can't be unhappy with how it all went. Yeah, now it's a good event, and, and thanks everyone for turning up. But um, yeah, it's missed the check by one spot and like fifty grams, I think. But uh, yeah, happy with uh, how it turned out. Um, so we have got uh, you do win. It's like an eight hundred dollar dial we're real. You've got sitting there. Uh, tell us exactly what it was because I we a lot of the product component of the sponsorship of this comp we like to to fill out those top ten places. And when you look on the decks in the boats of people fishing the open, it's it's near a hundred percent used dial nowadays. You must be happy with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, the guy, the guys support us really well, and and uh, yeah, that's why we keep coming back and supporting the events. So. That's no, good to good to be a part of it. Awesome, and we've got uh, your your you're on the highlights tonight because your observer John Parkinson took some great footage today. So we're going to have that in the highlights, which I'm not going to publish tonight. We're going to do the winners interview tonight. We'll have those highlights go up tomorrow night with uh, all of the awesome catches that came from on the water today. Let's get into the money uh, into fifth place, thousand wing wangs. Uh, he's only just across here, uh, Liam Crothers. You can have your novelty check now, mate, because I am not posting that. Um, I'm just going to come across here and just tell us, mate, uh, we got some highlights from you as well, but uh, you avoided the flat. Yeah, mate, I um, I decided to go play on the moored boats all day today. I, I had the flat in the back of my mind most of the day, but like I said to you uh, in the uh, wrap-up, I was, I was just having too much fun fishing, uh, something that I don't usually do, a very finesse-style uh, crab bite on some fluorocarbon in clear water and a lot of visual fishing too, which is really good fun. Including a highlight of a king trying to eat one of your brim. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, at first I thought it was a really big brim, but yeah, when it come up and swam around the kingy, the uh, Nick Nick was good enough to get it on footage, and it, it just shows how much life is actually in pit water and, and the systems yeah. at the moment. And it was amazing too how much um, how clear the water was coming in after the epic amount of rain that we've had. It was you know. 500 meters down from the start, it was crystal clear. So well done. You got a thousand bucks coming your way. Probably won't cover your expenses, but you know, adds a little bit to the uh, to the tournament account. I think Liam said before he gets a thousand bucks in one hand and then he just gives it back to ABT in the next hand. Um, in fourth place, do we have Tim Vickers online, Nicole? Tim sitting there. We haven't got Tim there at the moment, but he wins. Uh, the money goes up. It's fifteen hundred dollars for fourth place. Is he there, Tim? Yes, yeah, Steve. I'm here. Yeah. Well, oh, there you go. He's unmuted and there he is. So, Tim, uh, you get yourself 1500 bucks. You don't get one of those flash dial reels, but you get cold hard cash. I'll get Wally to hold that for you at the moment, mate. Hold that up and you can show Timmy what he got. Um, Tim, you you got 2.879 kilos on day one. Fairly pedestrian Sydney Harbour bag. But today, 4.7 kilos anchored by a 1.67 kilo fish, which I think was the second biggest one of the tournament. Tell us the story of that big kicker, mate. When did you get it and uh, what did it bite? Yeah, so that was my last fish of the day, um, about 1.15. I caught that on a Eco Gear ZX Blade. So what the guys were saying earlier, just they were picking up off the bottom. It was pretty much just cast out. It sunk to the bottom and I just felt him pick it up and swim away with it. Yeah, and the dog agrees with you, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> barking in the back. But um, yeah, I was fishing most of the day with... Um, just z-man grubs and just getting smaller fish but it was the blades at the end of the day that really sort of kicked it away i think that was a pattern that a lot of guys and we'll talk about the guy the guys that caught some of the big bags but but that that blade bite seems to be a bit of a uh, bit of a new trick on on an old flat that one yeah i know it seemed to be working really well that's what those fish were just sitting on the bottom there but i just seem to be getting smaller fish on the uh grubs but yeah the blade was the difference that really kicked it away in the end and just quickly, before, I don't know if everyone knows what you do, but I'm really interested by it. Just give us a 15-second description of your job. Uh, so I work on a LNG ship that travels between uh, Western Australia to Japan. So that's one thing with um, Nicole's call today to restrict it to pit water, like especially going away to sea. That was 100% the right call to restrict it there. I was looking out at the, the swell rolling through there. People would have broken boats or injured themselves if they were trying to come home in that so it was definitely the right call there you go mate someone who's got a lot more experience on the water than us and uh just quietly if you ever hit a sandbag i won't tell your boss it's all good 
<laughs> Thanks, Tim, and well done. Your your check is going to be in the mail as soon as we get back to Brisbane, so congratulations. Uh, that was uh, Tim Vickers in fourth place. Now, in third place, he's sitting right next to me here. Uh, he didn't start the tournament the best out of anyone. He had a bit of a prick of a time, but he ended up catching 4.08 kilos in the harbour and then followed it up with 3.953 kilos today. So Steve Nadesky, third place, there's going to be 2,000 bucks for you there, mate. And uh, there's always a saying, someone that has a bad experience at the start of a tournament or breaks something ends up doing pretty well. Your motor wouldn't start at the start, but then everything just went right after that. Oh, no, not really. I, I yeah, the, 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 the weights, say. Eh? Yeah, well, I got to the bridge and my first fish came about an hour later. It took me a while to get there. And then um, I went into the rocks. The electric was going the wrong way. The umbrella, I was trying to wait. The umbrella flew away. Kayaker picked it up. He's looking at me. Yep. He took off with it. He stole your umbrella. He stole my umbrella. <laughs> but he's thinking of it. Anyway, there was a difficult... <laughs> And about I kept. Did he know saying, your motor wasn't working? No, he didn't. So yeah, and he was looking at me like, "Why aren't you coming and getting your umbrella?" <laughs> I just kept going. Then I went, "Oh well, I lucky I had a little spare one." <laughs> yeah, and anyway, I kept fishing. Yeah, and it, the, and then after that, I kept trying the motor occasionally. And about quarter past twelve, I started it. I thought, great, Lane Cove time. So I took off to Lane Cove and did three upgrades as soon as I got there. There you go, mate. So uh, you left it till right at the end to catch your fish, but you got four kilos. Yep. Then today it all worked fine. And uh, where did you catch your fish today? Yeah, just on the flat, like everyone else, pretty much. They're yeah, yep. just throwing the soft plastic, letting it sit there, and just yeah, hopping it down. And yeah, they just it varied. It was a bit wild out there, and there was a lot of boats around us anyway. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and is this your highest place in an Oz Open? In Oz Open, yeah. I think it's my first Oz Open. I haven't entered one before. Oh, really? Yeah. So you should do this more often, mate. You make uh, four times your money this weekend. Yeah, well. <laughs> don't worry about expenses, mate. Don't worry about that side of it. The scratches and everything else <laughs> that come with it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but it was good. It was great. Well done, Steve. And congratulations on your first open. Now, here's the man of the day. Is is Have we got Adam online? Adam Bertoldo. Here he is here. He is the man that I, I had a little quick look at social media and you were the man that everybody was talking about. Sorry about that, Jamie. Um, doesn't matter if you win two Australian Open. <laughs> It's um that 6.56 kilo bag is the heaviest that we've ever seen in an Australian Open. I think uh, uh, Wayne Reed put 6.3 kilos out of Lane Cove onto the scales one day after having a fairly shocking first day. But uh, your two kilos plus your 6.56 got you from 20th place up to second place. And I know we talked about it a bit earlier on, but tell tell all the guys that maybe missed it earlier um, about your specials being lure that got the job done for you. Yeah, so it was just the um, the Berkeley Big Eye, which they don't make anymore in the Bandicoot colour. Um, I had three pound lined on and just long, nice long cast. I actually started the day off with soft plastics with the two inch shrimp and I found I wasn't staying to the bottom. So I thought something a bit heavier. Yep. Um, saw the blade was already tied on from kind of yesterday, threw it back out and um, just seemed to pick up the first 37 forker. And then after that, it just kept going rolling through. I snuck a look at the uh, scoreboard a little way in and I go, geez, Adam is going all right. I think you had three kilo fish at that stage, but by the end of it, your, your light, your lightest fish was 1.115 kilos, exactly the same as your heaviest fish today. So, uh, so it was an epic bag, 6.56 kilos. I think it was nearly two kilos clear, a uh, kilo and a half, a little bit more than a kilo and a half clear of the next bag down. So uh, a question I asked you before, and I want you to answer it again is when you wake up this morning, did you think it was going to be one of those days or did you just look out the window and say, ah, oh, shit, it's raining. I'm going to have a prick of a day. Yeah, no, funny you should say that. I've actually um, recorded a video to the missus this morning on the way out in the four knot zone saying, what am I doing here? And um, sat here back on the lounge before and said, shouldn't have sent that video. And, uh, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to win yourself two and a half thousand. I don't know if she's watching at the moment, but there's two and a half thousand dollars coming your way. Um, and one of the uh, Australian Open badges, we're going to send that to you. As soon as we get back to the office, we'll mail you a check and you'll get that in the mail and it'll go straight up on the, I don't know, mantelpiece shed. You get that novelty check to keep and mate, one better next year, mate. You just got to learn how to put a few, another kilo in the harbour yesterday. It'd be big money. Yeah, exactly. I was a bit disappointed with yesterday, but what do you do? That's it. Um, you said you caught a lot of fish, just couldn't get that kick of fish, caught a lot of fish, didn't have a problem getting a limit, just had a problem getting the big ones. Yeah, exactly. I went and fished the canals there at um, out the front of Hubberfield Rowers, got heaps of fish, heaps of 27 to the tip, 
but couldn't yep. find anything. And then kind of zoomed around for the rest of the day. And every corner I went around, um, there was someone on the pole or wall or something like that and kind of just had to skip my way up and, yeah, couldn't find them. There you go. Anyway, um, I think you've done fantastic in your first event and you've experienced both the highs and the lows of the Australian Open. Literally, you've had it all. You've had virtually last the biggest bag by miles and it's a roller coaster. Um, Australian Open is always about keeping your gear going, keeping yourself going and having that physical and mental stamina to get through the three days. So uh, are you going to come and have another roll of the dice next year? Yes, yeah, certainly will. But yeah, thank you uh, everyone at the ABT uh, tournaments too. It was great. Great few days. That's great, mate. And we've got a couple of, we've had even had a few observers filming you from other boats, oh, catching fish. So we've got that in the highlights you can look forward to tomorrow night. So well done, mate. Second place, bloody champion ever. People will be talking about that one for years. Um, I don't have to worry about if the, the winner has dialed in because he's sitting right next to me here. Jamie McEwen, he is uh, on a rich vein of form at the moment. Let's talk about your last three Australian Opens, Jamie. First, second, first. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been... Uh... Three in a row, but yeah, Mick was was too good for me last year, so it was uh, it's good to to get it again. Um, were you watching the scoreboard today? Uh, like when you've got someone on fire like that and just catching big and bit, whose smallest fish is the same size as your big fish? Do you get worried that he's going to catch another one point eight? Mate, I, I was I was trying not to think about. It. I was it was like for me fishing flats and that sort of stuff. I've never fished in pit water much before. I've never put a bag in pit water before. I just um. <clears throat> I was just trying to concentrate on what I was doing myself, really. But yeah, it was hard not to not to see him every five minutes just with his rod bent over and drag screaming. Oh, so you were within sight of each other? You can see uh, second place there. Yeah, yeah. I, I said to him this afternoon. He, it was like the fish moved. They, he was like catching them every five minutes, and it sort of went on a bit of lull for him. And then I started catching them. And next minute, I sort of slowed down for me, and I look over, and he's gone, and. He was further, well, like way over that side further, and he's on him again. It's like, yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing, that bloke. So, yeah. yeah. And it's like a big school of fish that move around? Yeah. I, mate, I don't know. All, all I could put down, put it down to was they were just coming in out from, from sea and with the swell and all that sort of stuff, and they were just sort of hooking around the corner there and, and running along the deeper water. I'm going to do something mid-show here. I'm going to get Steve and Jamie to swap positions so I can see what's going on. You guys swap over because we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tackle that you used. Um. Of course, Jamie, you win the uh, the Greg Lee Memorial Trophy. There's something you've had before. And I noticed that Michael Colaturis has even got his name put on there. Thank you very much for doing that, Mick. I don't know how you did it, but it's an actual, it's a perfect match. Um, so you get to take that home for another year. And of course, you get the take-home trophy, the, the big novelty check, mate. And uh, it's a pretty good start to the year. You've missed the earlier tournaments because your boat didn't turn up. You've had to watch it from afar, but uh, one shot, one kill for the new boat in 2022. Yeah, yeah, mate. <clears throat> this is um this is the tournament that I look forward to all year. This is um the sort of holy grail, I guess you'd call it. It's um yeah, you and especially losing uh like last year, it was uh stung a bit for twelve months. Um so yeah, you think about it and, and go over things in your head for, for twelve months and I was well and truly ready this year, so you um, let's look at your day one. You you fish what we call Jamie's Reef there down the mouth, a spot that people have on and off fish, but no one's ever really you know stuck the knife home in that spot. Um, you've spent the time on it, you've worked out how to catch it, but still it took until like the last hour for you to get your kicker fish and get that lead that you took into today. Yeah, mate, I, I, it had a very much a, a day three from last year feel to it. It just sort of it was okay in the morning and if you drop fish there and, and lose big fish there, it sort of shuts down real quick. Um, <clears throat> and I lost a few fish, just pulled hooks and then got dusted a few times across the top of the reef. And, and then it just sort of slowed down and it was like, it's going to happen again. And I think I only had three and a half or something like that. And then I got a couple of, I got a small upgrade, I think. And then, yeah, it wasn't until the last sort of, oh, it would have been last 30 minutes of fishing that I, that I got that big one after losing a big one beside the boat. So and that was about a kilo and a half fish. What did it upgrade? I'm not sure. It took me from about 3.7 to, to 4.7. So. so it was a kilo upgrade. So basically that was the fish that won you the open? Yeah, mate. And, and that's what the open's about. Like I, I said it to you when we did the interview the other week, like when it's your time to win, you'll it'll things like that will happen. And I said it to Chris on Friday or whenever it was just the other day, like, those those little crucial things that you at the time you're not aware of, of what it's going to do for you that's that's what, what brings it home same with mick last year got that fish for lifetime to to bring it home for him so yeah it's those 
those lucky big bites, you just got to be good enough to get it in. Now, let's look at some of your gear for the two days. I know we had two different uh, patterns going on. You had Jamie's Reef, but then you, you did the flats thing today. I think we're all fairly familiar with your uh, the, the fact that you use cranker crabs and you lose a lot of cranker crabs down on that reef there. Yeah. Um, just run us through the tackle you use in that nasty country. Yeah, so um, I use the Samaki C12 B3. Um, I've got a lose um, reel on this one. It's a lose custom Speedmaster two, uh, 200 size. You're just reading yeah. that off the reel. I am because um, I've got a couple of different ones. So, um, so yeah, and I've got um, x braid on that one. That's 14-pound x braid or PE8 and 8-pound leader. So it, it's not – it's heavy, but it's not 20-pound to reef them out of the stick. Like you, you lose your share of battles in there? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's, um, it's one of those places where you can sort of up it a bit, but I think if you go too much, you, you might get bit. No. Nah. Yeah. Nah. All right. Well, let's get rid of that one there. Steve, you hold on to that one and uh, think about what might've been. Let's talk about your day on the flats today. You yeah. said you were re-rigging stuff uh, because all of a sudden this morning we cut the arena down to pit water um, and you were busily re-rigging and what did you end up on? Yeah. So when you, told me this morning we were uh, cutting it back through to pit water. I had all six and eight pound stuff tied on because although my, uh, this shoulder, this person on my shoulder was saying, you got to go up to, to Spencer and all that sort of stuff. This one was saying, don't be a fool, fool, you'll never get back. So I was sort of half glad that Nicole said we're not going. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I grabbed this one out of the, the locker. It was in there. It hadn't been out all week. Cause it's sort of a, the lighter rod. I probably use it a little bit more in the canals at home with the, the aquas and stuff. So it's a um, Zing extreme. It's the seven, six, two flats rod. Um, it's got a, an Excella 2000 reel on it. Um, and I had four pound braid and I was a bit different to the other guys though, that were getting them on the blades. I was, I only got plastic bites all day. So I was, I started off on a um, one eighth jig head. Um, and then as the wind and the tide sort of picked up, I went to a one six and then to a one quarter and all my fish come on the, um, the tackle junkie, bait junkie, bait junkie, sorry. Um, grubs in the, in the motor oil and the other one, the one with the sparkles in yeah, it. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's like the motor oil with the, with the glitter in it. I think it's cool. The mate, you're channeling the sponsor karma by putting the sponsor product on in the dial Australian open and look what happened. Yeah, mate. Yeah. I think we, we, got them given to us in a, in a pack at one of the other tournaments. So it was, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, it was probably the first time I've, I've actually used them. So yeah, it was good. What well, time on again? Definitely. <laughs> um, did you scent bomb that thing? You're famous for getting a cranker crab and turning it into a golf ball of uh, S factor. No, I didn't. Really? No, did no, you run out or something? No, well, they're scented. So Already? I didn't, uh, didn't have to. Um, no, I don't, I don't really put a lot of scent on, on plastics and stuff. I think, I was sort of fishing for a more of a reaction bite rather than the bait thing. Like I wasn't sort of leaving it sit still. I was sort of throw it cast out as far as I could and then sort of lift it up. And then on the, on the drop, you'd feel it pull it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then when that slowed up, I'd cast it out and I went to the quarter ounce jig head and I was just sort of grubbing it back through the weed and picking up ones that way. Mate, you've, uh, you've been on a rich vein of form. Are there any sponsors that you want to thank uh, for your success? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I want to thank uh, New Look Floors, Samaki. Um, they're doing the, the X-Braid and the Versus uh, tackle boxes now. Um, BLA, Minkota Hummingbird. Um, yeah, there's a whole swag, Sporties, Cranker. It's really good. And they've all helped you out with that flash and you both of yours, mate. Uh, watch out this year. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's great to be back in a, in a big boat. So, yeah, no, it's been, it, it was awesome yesterday coming back from the harbour in, in the longer and wider boat it yeah. was a lot comfier <laughs> there you go and I'm sure I came out of middle harbour there and it was it was a bit hairy and it's good to be in a big boat when you do that congratulations you're a two-time Australian Open winner thank you very much to uh to die with the naming sponsor of this event thank you very much to Nicole you probably can't see her if you're watching on zoom but everyone here can see Nicole cutting all this thing up on the computer down there it's hard running an app tournament. She gets back in the morning, gets straight on the computer, starts approving catches all day. It's actually a lot easier for us to run away in tournament. We just put them all on the scales, write the numbers down once. So thank you very much, Nicole, for uh, for giving all of the spectators the access and the competitors all the help they need to run a very smooth app tournament in very trying conditions. Thank you to the competitors. Thanks to the observers and thanks to all the people that... Uh, contributed throughout the weekend. Um, uh, Greg Cito, if you're still online, thank you very much for uh, signing the checks and uh, making it all happen. Until next year, we are signing out from the uh, 2022 
Di Webber from Australian Open. Thanks for joining us on the Zoom presentation.